Vancomycin is generally used for the treatment of gram-positive infections and this could be for example endocarditis. Vancomycin would be used if penicillin is not appropriate and this may be due to the fact that the infection is severe or due to the fact of the presence of methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Vancomycin can also be used for the treatment of antibiotic associated colitis caused by C. difficile. In this case it would be used orally and generally this is when metronidazole is not effective or not appropriate. Vancomycin inhibits the growth and cross-linking of peptidoglycan chains. This in turn inhibits the synthesis of the cell wall of gram-positive bacteria. And if we go back to microbe anatomy, the way we differentiate between gram-positive bacteria and gram-negative bacteria is by looking at the thickness of the cell wall. Gram-positive bacteria has a thick peptidoglycan cell wall and would stain purple with a gram stain technique. Because of its mechanism of action, it's therefore very effective against aerobic and anaerobic gram-positive bacteria. This is ineffective against most gram-negative bacteria. The most common side effect of vancomycin is pain and inflammation of the vein at the infusion site, and this is called thrombophlebitis. If vancomycin is infused rapidly, this can lead to several different side effects. One of them is called Redman syndrome. And the reason why it's called Redman syndrome is because of its appearance of erythema over the entire body. Associated with this, the patient may experience hypotension and bronchospasms, typical features of an anaphylactic reaction. Other side effects of vancomycin include nephrotoxicity, so damage to the kidneys, as well as ototoxicity. Vancomycin requires careful monitoring of the plasma drug concentrations to ensure it's in a therapeutic range and avoids toxic levels. You have to be particularly cautious with those with existing renal impairment as well as elderly patients. This is due to the fact that elderly patients are at an increased risk of renal impairment. Vancomycin is at increased risk of nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity when prescribed alongside medication that would cause these effects also. This will include aminoglycosides. If vancomycin is given alongside gentamicin, you have to be particularly cautious of nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity. Because vancomycin is a large hydrophilic molecule, it finds it very difficult to cross lipid membranes and therefore it has to be given intravenously for systemic infections. Important things to note and important things to communicate when a patient is on vancomycin is generalized erythema across the body when infusing the medication. The patient should also be advised to report any ringing of the ears or any hearing loss as this could be an indication of ototoxicity. It's very important to counsel patients on reporting hearing loss or tinnitus immediately. This is because if vancomycin is stopped promptly, the hearing impairment is reversible. When giving IV treatment with vancomycin, you have to be continuously taking pre-dose levels before doses to determine it is in a therapeutic range. Other general factors you'd be looking out for is looking at infection markers, such as the C-reactive protein, as well as the white blood cell count. These would both be raised in a patient with an infection. Also, if the patient was pyrexic, you want to be looking at the patient's temperature to ensure it's going back into range. During prolonged treatment, you also want to be looking at the full blood count as well as the renal function to ensure you're looking out for any renal impairment as well as any neutropenia or thrombocytopenia. These both are also a side effect of vancomycin therapy. To summarize, vancomycin is used to treat infections caused by gram-positive bacteria. They are generally used when penicillins are not appropriate due to the severity of the infection or due to the presence of MRSA. Vancomycin is also effective against C. difficile infection. Side effects to look out for include blood disorders such as neutropenia and thrombocytopenia, ototoxicity, nephrotoxicity, and thrombophlebitis.